assalamu alaikum dear students welcome to dr rumi lectures today we are going to study blood coagulation tests the tests for blood clotting are used to diagnose some bleeding disorders like hemophilia thrombocytopenia these tests are also used to monitor a patient who is taking some anticoagulants as a treatment for example heparin or warfarin these tests are also usually performed before surgery if prolonged there is increased risk of bleeding during surgery some commonly used uh, blood coagulation tests are bleeding time which is also called as bt then clotting time which is also called as ct prothrombin time which is also called as pt activated partial thromboplastin time which is also called as aptt international normalized ratio which is also called as inr thrombin time which is also called as tt first let's talk about bleeding time bleeding time is the time interval which is taken between the oozing of blood when a fingertip is pricked with a lancet till the bleeding stops due to formation of platelet blood bleeding time tells you about primary hemostasis and this is usually determined by duke's method what do we do we take a sterilized pointed lancet with which we prick our left index finger or the ear lobe as soon as the blood oozes from this pricked finger it's touched with a filter paper and that time is taken as zero time after every 15 seconds the filter paper is touched till bleeding stops so the first spot on this filter paper is made as soon as the blood oozes out from this pricked finger and this time is taken as zero after every 15 seconds this filter paper is touched Uh, with the blood drop till bleeding stops normal bleeding time is between 1 to 6 minutes this bleeding time is prolonged in those conditions when there is a less number of platelets in our blood that is thrombocytopenia for example in case of dengue fever bleeding time is also prolonged when the function of platelets is decreased for example in case of von willebrand disease because von willebrand factor is required for the attachment of platelets with the collagen fibers also when someone is using low dose of aspirin because it decreases the function of platelets by decreasing the formation of thromboxane a2 this also increases bleeding time and in case of vitamin c deficiency bleeding time also increases the next blood coagulation test is clotting time also called as ct this is the time interval which is between the oozing of blood after a cut is made in our skin till the formation of fibrin clot this is usually determined by capillary through method and its normal value is between 3 to 8 minutes how do we determine clotting time in order to determine clotting time finger is pricked with a sterilized lancet then blood is filled in a capillary tube because blood comes in contact with the glass tube there is activation of the intrinsic pathway which leads to the activation of the blood clotting mechanism after an initial wait of 3 minutes we break a piece of half to 1 cm of this capillary tube at one end and after every 30 seconds we keep on repeating it till the fibrin thread appears at the break point we use stopwatch to record the, the time taken for this blood to clot clotting time is prolonged in any condition in which any clotting factor is deficient in our blood for example in hemophilia in which either clotting factor number 8 or 9 or 11 is deficient also in case of liver disease because liver synthesizes most of the clotting factors so liver disease will decrease clotting factors in our blood hence the clotting time will increase also when someone is using anticoagulant like warfarin or heparin it will also prevent clotting or delay clotting hence the clotting time will be increased and moreover in case of von willebrand disease because the clotting factor number 8 may be deficient hence the clotting time will also be increased unfortunately this clotting time test varies widely depending upon the method which is used to measure it this is why this is no longer commonly used in clinics so the other alternate sophisticated tests to determine blood clotting are prothrombin time activated partial thromboplastin time inr and tt which are used usually in place of clotting time now let's talk about another blood coagulation test this is prothrombin time also called as pt this is one of the routine test for pre surgery analysis along with aptt determination of the pt test is important for evaluation of the extrinsic pathway of blood clotting 
because prothrombin time test depends upon the concentration of prothrombin in our blood so this is why as soon as blood is collected from the vein of a patient this blood is immediately anticoagulated by using either citrate or oxalate so that none of the prothrombin is converted to thrombin now this anticoagulated blood it will be centrifuged and the cells will be separated and plasma will be separated we need plasma because plasma contains all the clotting factors clotting factor number 3 which is also called as tissue factor or tissue thromboplastin it will be added into this plasma so that clotting can be activated through extrinsic pathway and a large excess of calcium is also added so that it nullifies the effect of anticoagulant citrate or oxalate stopwatch is switched on and the total time taken for this plasma to become gel that is to clot after factor number 3 and excess of calcium is added into this plasma is called as prothrombin time when there is less prothrombin present in our blood more time will be taken for the blood to clot so you can see here that we draw a graph in which uh, time is given on the x axis and prothrombin concentration is given on the y axis so more time is taken by the blood to clot that means there is less concentration of prothrombin in our blood and less time when taken by the blood to clot it means there is more concentration of prothrombin in our blood the normal prothrombin time is between 11 to 13 seconds and this prothrombin time is increased in those conditions in which prothrombin is deficient also because prothrombin is synthesized by the liver so in case of liver disease when prothrombin will be low this prothrombin time will be increased in case of deficiency of any factor which is present in the extrinsic pathway for example clotting factor number 7 this prothrombin time will be prolonged and also in case of deficiency of any clotting factor which is present in the common pathway of blood clotting for example clotting factor number 10 5 and 1 prothrombin time is also increased and also if someone is using warfarin which antagonizes the action of vitamin k and hence some important clotting factors which are present either in the common pathway or in the extrinsic pathway when they are affected this prothrombin time will be prolonged and also in case of vitamin k deficiency prothrombin time is prolonged however in hemophilia prothrombin time is normal because in hemophilia intrinsic pathway is affected not the extrinsic pathway But there is one issue with the determination of prothrombin time the tissue factor which we use here to activate the extrinsic pathway is either extracted from the human placenta or from the rabbit's brain and the activity of this clotting factor number 3 our tissue factor it varies in different batches of tissue factor and this is why the value or the results of prothrombin time it varies on the basis of activity of the tissue factor so even in the same patient the prothrombin time may vary when the tissue factor used has different activity and also on the basis of difference in the analytical systems used so how do we solve this problem for this we have another test which is called as international normalized ratio or inr this test is used to standardize the measurements of prothrombin time so how do we define inr INR is the ratio of the prothrombin time of the patient sample with the prothrombin time of the normal control raised to the power of ISI. So what is ISI? ISI is also called as International Sensitivity Index and the manufacturer will assign a specific value of ISI to each batch of tissue factor. And the ISI it indicates the activity of the tissue factor with a standard sample. and the normal value of isi it varies between 1 to 2 what is the normal value of inr the normal value of inr is between 0.9 to 1.3 when inr value is high for example 4 or 5 then there is increased risk of bleeding and when this inr value is low for example 0.5 then there is increased risk of clot formation so what is the clinical use of uh, inr test let's suppose a patient is having atrial fibrillation and because there is increased risk of clot formation in this patient having atrial fibrillation that clot from the heart may break away it may become embolus and go to the brain and it can cause stroke and this is why anticoagulation must be provided by giving oral anticoagulant which is warfarin and in such patients of atrial fibrillation who are taking oral anticoagulant warfarin the required value of inr is between 2 to 3 and those patients who are having heart valve disorders their desired value of inr is a bit higher between 3 to 4 so it means the inr usage is important to monitor the impact of anticoagulant warfarin and also to adjust it dose in some high risk patients like those who are having atrial fibrillation and those who are having heart valve diseases the next test of blood clotting is 
partial thromboplastin time which can be written as PTT or it can also be called as activated partial thromboplastin time. Here A can be written as a small letter or as a big letter. A PTT test is carried out to determine the time which is taken for the plasma to clot after we add phospholipids, a surface activator and calcium to it. Let's suppose we take blood from the vein of a patient. First we anticoagulate it with citrate or oxalate just like we did in case of a PT test. Then this anticoagulated blood is centrifuged so that we remove cells and plasma. Now very high concentration of calcium and phospholipids and choline will be added into this plasma. Here choline acts as a surface activator just like collagen and phospholipids they are alternate to platelets in this case. Now here the intrinsic pathway will be activated. This calcium it will antagonize or nullify the action of the anticoagulant citrate or oxalate. The stopwatch will be switched on and the total time taken for this plasma to become gel or clot it will be called as activated partial thromboplastin time. The normal value of APTT test is between 30 to 45 seconds. This test is prolonged in case of deficiency of any factor which is present in the intrinsic pathway. For example, in case of hemophilia, when clotting factor number 8 or 9 or clotting factor number 11 may be deficient. Also in case of liver disease, when the synthesis of these clotting factors which are present in the intrinsic pathway may be deficient, this time will be prolonged. And also in case of heparin use, which inactivates the factors of intrinsic pathway, this time will be prolonged. And in case of antiphospholipid syndrome, the APTT time will be prolonged. The next clotting test is thrombin time or TT. In order to determine TT, we add activated clotting factor number 2 or thrombin into the blood, which converts fibrinogen into fibrin. The normal value of thrombin time is 10 to 15 seconds, and it will be prolonged in case of this fibrinogenemia, which means that fibrinogen level is normal, but fibrinogen protein is not functioning normally. And also in case of heparin being used as a treatment. The next clotting test is D-dimers. D-dimers are the fibrin degradation products which are released during fibrinolysis. When blood clot is formed, then the fibrin fibers, the clots linked in different directions. Plasmin, after some days, will break it into D-dimers. So in all those conditions in which clotting has occurred in the body, after some days, there will be increase in the level of D-dimers in our blood. For example, in DIC, disseminated intravascular coagulation, in which there is widespread small clot formation in different vessels of the body, it may occur in some serious bacterial infections. Moreover, in DVT, a deep vein thrombosis, which may occur in the leg veins and also in pulmonary embolism, in which a clot may break from the leg veins and can come to our lungs. In all these conditions, the D-dimers, they are formed, hence their level will be increased in our blood. Now here I ask a very important MCQ question. Let's suppose you have a patient who is very seriously ill. The patient had infection. Now patient is admitted in ICU. And the blood coagulation profile has been um, done. Prothrombin time is raised. APTT is raised. Platelet level is low. And there is also increase in D-dimers level. What is your diagnosis? The options are hemophilia, thrombocytopenia, vulnerable disease, DIC, and the use of aspirin and the best possible answer is DIC because in case of disseminated intravascular coagulation not only widespread small clots are formed everywhere in the body but also there is consumption coagulopathy which means that platelets will be used up in different vessels of our body so this is why platelet level will be low and because clotting factors will also be used up so all the clotting factors, whether they are present in the intrinsic pathway or the extrinsic pathway, they are used up in making a lot of clots. Hence, the deficiency of those clotting factors will increase prothrombin time because the extrinsic pathway will be affected and also increase the APTT because the intrinsic pathway will also be affected. And also because there will be breakdown of uh, cross-linked fibrin fibers and hence there will be increase in the dimers level in our blood. So this is a typical picture of a patient who is having DIC or disseminated intravascular coagulation. So this was all about these coagulation tests. I hope you have understood the principle of each of these tests and in which conditions these tests are prolonged. So thank you so much for watching this video. See you next time with another video.